Hi, it's Andy from Wally Club. I'm with new Wally member. Well, not Hello. quite a new Wally member, Richard. Right. Everard Junction. Thanks yeah. for the invite. Oh, Thanks no problem for, at all. Uh, no problem uh, at all. Come and visit. That's fine. No problems. So, so. Enjoy the open day. Yeah, Cindy. yeah. Open day is a combination of two different emotions. It was enjoyable, and it was also a bit of panic. It was draining yeah, as well. It was. It was draining. Um, I think perhaps we bit off a little bit more than we could chew trying to do all those kits and stuff in that urban environment but we did manage with yeah. five minutes to spare um, so yeah I really enjoyed it and it was a, it was a new experience you know I've never modeled under pressure before yeah uh, so it was good to sort of push myself and say well I can make stuff but can I make stuff you know working at speed when, and when there's a time, quality as well. time constraint you know and still try and keep the same standards so I had to cut a few corners off absolutely yeah but uh, yeah no I really enjoyed it and uh, I watched, um, I think it was Cotters Moore that done his video today of yeah, the, uh, not, of the I've event. Not, not and seen the videos, um, yeah. uh, N Trains has gone round and filmed the actual layouts that were running because obviously we didn't get to see a lot of I that. Know, it's sort of know, I, I, saw, I walked through them, I'm like, flipping heck, there's a lot of layouts here to see and different scales and yeah. you know, various levels of construction, but I didn't get to see any of it. it. <laughs> so it was good to watch the video today and actually Absolutely. see what was there. But, but you, well, you know, you're welcome to come along. Yeah, yeah, of course, I know where you, you are now. Just so. down and yeah, yeah, we'll sort of you guys. All right. Okay, good stuff. So looking at the tank scene, we've got Magna Bar, got yep. Magna Bar running. Yeah, seems to be behaving itself it's working at the well. Yeah. So if you did another layout again, mm -hmm. would you use it? Yes, I would. Um, it just adds that extra dimension to the layout. Um, it is flipping fiddly um, and I've pushed it to its limits. I mean, every Magna Rail demonstration I've seen has been, particularly with the cyclist. One board. And it's been on one little board. Um, obviously we're running from where you're sitting all the way around over to the far side of the layout yeah. there. We're looking at maybe a, a 15 foot one way trip. So there's a lot of distance for it to cover. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot putting it together. And uh, it, after all that effort, it has worked very reliably. I haven't had to rip it up and do major surgery. Um, the video you saw when I installed it, um, it's worked since then. Okay. Um, would I use it on an exhibition? I don't know how well it would respond to being jiggled about and moved. That's something I'm interested because mm. I've looked at obviously my seven mil. Yes. I'd love to have moving cars. Oh, absolutely. The size of the cars. Yeah. I think it would give you that extra dimension. Yeah, it would. Like you've got hair with yeah. that. Well, just them tootling around. It just adds that something, absolutely. doesn't it? Absolutely. You've got um, that extra layer, and it's yeah. It's just it's something else for people to look at as Definitely. well when they're watching. If you haven't got a train running, there is There's cars moving. going up and down the street. Um, I don't know how well it will respond to you know being transported all the time. I'm sure if you built it well enough, it would be okay. Yeah. I'd certainly use it again. Um, it's been real fun to, to use it and operate it. It was hard to install. Um, it was fun for a bit, but the novelty did wear Absolutely. off, you know, like so many modeling jobs do. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd use it again. Very happy with it. As you can see, they're, they're, they're tootling along quite nicely. Yeah, it looks good. And uh, you get lovely realistic speed out of it. It's very controllable. Very, very controllable. I mean, there's, the, there's a DC controller behind me and I just vary the speed. If I want to film a police car chasing somebody, I can speed them up. You know, I could do little scenes of people stopping and driving away, what have you, so. And you've got some colour now in the road, so mm. that makes all the difference. Fun. Yeah, I've done a bit of painting. The, there is a limitation obviously in the road surface it has to be very very thin you're stuck yeah. with paper um, you could use a printed surface I might uh, might choose to do that yeah. if I was to use it again I've decided to paint and then you see I've painted a few potholes yeah, I, I like the paint because it's mm. it's personal then to you yeah it's not absolutely just, it's not just a printed and a mirror of the next yeah, sheet to the next absolutely. sheet to the next sheet yeah it's, it varies along its along absolutely. its length and it gives it a bit of depth having it this deep matte color yeah. you know a printed item will always have a bit of shininess to it um, if they as as it's used the cars do wear the paint off in places it's just a quick brush with an airbrush but that might be a good effect over time you know yeah. you always get the road oh absolutely yeah the wear in the road yeah, and like you say as it gets older it should look better because the road will only deteriorate absolutely. let's not forget we're modeling a british town yeah you know you need to have the road in a suitable state of disrepair especially the here we're talking yeah, about isn't exactly it? yeah especially the late 80s a lot of inspiration for this area is coming from watford my hometown um, there's a lot of terraced houses that back onto the railway like this yeah. around the middle of Watford um, where the railway station is um, so yeah I'd use Magna Rail again definitely really pleased with it good you've given me ideas now yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, it's infectious isn't absolutely. it absolutely yeah, yeah. definitely I'd like to try the cyclist 
cyclist yeah. vehicle because he actually pedals. Yeah, I, cool. I think that does look fast. Yeah, I might try and squeeze him in somewhere. somewhere yeah, just yeah. find the space. Yeah, absolutely. Have you seen the one we've got the uh, the mud off road car? Yeah, yeah. That there's a little on, uh, a, on a hill. There's a Land Rover, that's I think, it, yeah. on one of their demonstration that's layouts. It, I've seen yeah. that. It looks I've very, watched, very good. I think I've watched every Magna Rail video there is on YouTube before I committed to to purchasing some of it yeah. because. It's, it seems to be quite, un it's not very well known, it's, a lot it's, of people haven't yeah. used it. And you struggle to find it, especially mm. a lot of, you know, foreign sites, obviously Dutch sites, German sites, yeah. French sites, yeah. but there's no one really taking it, it in this country. No, yet. there's no UK supplier for so it as of yet. Um, I was buying directly from Magna Rail. Um, they've, Magna Rail have now sold the business um, to Markets, which okay. I think is a French shop. Yeah. might be mistaken on that um, and that's now the easiest way to get hold of it in the UK but there is no UK supplier so for, uh, certainly at the moment it's, it's a bit of a, a bit of a niche yeah um, which is nice you know, it adds it's, an it's extra good, it's yeah, it's, it's, for you. yeah it adds an extra dimension to the layout you know. but, uh, but people seem to love it you know the video did really really well yeah I wasn't expecting it to because it's such a it's a very niche it's thing it's to do. There's nothing you've done before yeah so it's it, you're probably right it's just so different you know but it, it just took off so, yeah, yeah I'm really surprised. Good, good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're looking at the, the track height. Yep. So, is it a pretty consistent height across around the layers? The track height remains the same, it is dead level. Think of it as a second baseboard over this base over this layer. Part, yeah. That's right, yeah. So, it's 130 millimetres high, and that's purely just to give me as much room as possible for doing what I want to do with the scenery. So this scenery here is 50 mil above the base layer because I wanted a gentle embankment. But should the need arise, I can drop down another 50 mil and get a real nice deep sort of gully or cutting or whatever, whatever I want to create. So yeah, track is 130 mil above the baseboard height, and just think of it as a baseboard on top of the baseboard, baseboard. for the track. And when you looked at the back scenes, yeah, how did you choose the back scenes and why? And uh, the back scenes was a, a challenge because of the length of the layout i think the back scene i've used is by id back scenes yeah. um, it's quite a popular one it's featured on various layouts dean park is using the same uh, the same back scene it's 40 feet in length because it comes in four packs and it's the only back scene i could find that would actually do the whole layout in one go yeah. otherwise i was having to try and cut mix and, and fade and mix and match yeah. the other back scenes id do mostly in packs of two or three and they just weren't going to go, go the distance. Yeah. Um, so I went for that back scene uh, and I decided to have it sort of lower down behind the track, same level as this basically. So if I want to, the terrain behind can drop down, away. Go up, that's angles, that's exactly angles. right. Yeah. And the, uh, the slope of the roof also restricts the height of the back scene. So where we're sat at the moment, it doesn't look like the back scene's all that tall and I could have made it higher. But once you get to the edge of the layout where the roof slopes in, I'm hitting the roof. That's Definitely. So it gives it a nice depth. Absolutely, well. yeah. And the curving of the back scenes just allows you to follow nice a train flow. and you can pan along and it, it's great fun. And then you don't have that awkward corner, 90 mm. degree corner that's always difficult to fill. So that's the, the science, I suppose, behind the back scene. So at Wally Club, we've got, I've got double O scale modelers and we've mm -hmm. got the M modelers. Yep. And They've both got, I think, about a millimetre difference. Yes, it's tiny, isn't it's it? Tiny, but it's a big difference. And I've been told off for saying the seven mil there, no scale seven. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got did, seven mil scale seven. Did you consider going to EM gauge with this, or if you were always going to be double O? I did think about going down a, a more serious sort of scale approach, um, but in the end, I went for the best compromise I can get with RTR items. Um, so I've respaced the sleepers on regular Pico Code 75 to match the uh, the new Pico bullhead, um, and it's it's given me a bit more of a scale appearance. Now it's weathered. I think it looks quite good. Um, I felt that was the the sort of step I wanted to take with this layout over the previous one. The next layout might be more serious. Uh, we might start looking into things like EM, but. The objective for this layout was to have something that was just fun to operate and ran reliably and worked, um, and worked well. Um, I had so many derailments and issues with the first layout. My goals for this one were more it works properly and I have fun. Um, once I've got, and now I've, I've learnt how to build a layout that works properly. So the next thing I do, I might be a bit more serious and we might start thinking about a finer, a finer scale. How did you find the bullhead whale? 
because I really like the ball head rail. Um, I'm waiting. Uh, they've got some points and stuff coming out in the ball head rail. Hopefully later in the year. I yeah, think. Is it, I think it was our show this year. They got the samples mm. and uh, I've seen the samples of the double slip. Um, I want to put one in the station um, because at the moment I've just got a standard um, code 75 sleeper spacing on a point you can't really do that no. um, so what I've done is I've cheated and used the bull head points but even those versus the the code 75 the appearance is just it's delicate yeah they they've managed to make double O which we all know is a compromise look really quite good yeah. and it's by no means perfect but a big improvement um, so I'd always wanted to use the bull head track on this layout before I even started building it and then when I got hold of some of it, I was like, oh, hang on a minute, my regular 75 concrete sleeper is going to look a bit odd in comparison with the sleeper spacing. So I chose to respace the sleepers. Yeah. Um, all in all, it was about 20 hours of work uh, to respace the sleepers. And, and, and a few grey hairs. And a few grey hairs and a lot of films and a lot of late nights. And it was probably another 10 or 20 hours to lay it. <laughs> it's worth it in the end. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really pleased I've done it. If I didn't do it, it would be niggling me right now. It would just be at the back of my mind. Yes, no worries. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've gone for the the best I can do with off-the-shelf items, I suppose. Yeah. Um, the next stage is to look at something like EM, and that may well happen. Good, good. Andy, what are you doing? I was going to fit a decoder, Richard. With a hand decoder. With a tenon saw and a cordless drill. You never know when you need a tenon saw. On a Hornby King class? But I need to separate it. I, I, I think we need to use the appropriate tools. I think I need, to, I think I need some help, don't I? Yes. Okay. Shall we move out the bay? Yes. I think let's get, let's get on. Let's do this properly, shall okay. we? Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, right. Well, first thing to do is to uh, get the uh, body shell off of the tender which should be achieved by two small screws underneath. Obviously you want to protect the loco, so I've put a sheet of card down and we should be able to very carefully remove these two screws. Presumably. Mm. I have to check the instructions.
less fat than the uh, first one. Actually, the one that we're going to do. Thank you. 